Hello, everyone, and welcome to Local Chat. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Daddy's got a new setup, but it's the same old goodness. Ian Gibson pouring one out for the Yeti. Ian, how you it's doing? It's been a week, folks. It's been a week. This is my second beer of the night, which, if you know anything about me, means it's been a doozy. I'm it ready to talk some video games. Let's have I some fun, boys. I I'm glad. I'm glad. Also joining us, Jason, the green eight ball himself. <laughs> yes. Couldn't bring the rest of the Fire Emblem party, but you're here. <laughs> That's a, hopefully enough. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Uh, folks, we're here to talk about video games. We're here to talk about our lives. We're here to talk about the things that matter that aren't really that important to humanity. But uh, before we do that, Ian said he had a story. He said the best story that's ever been told. He also said F the Bible because that crap's bad. And I said, what? The second part is true. And you, then you said, said all religions a... too. Um... <laughs> I feel like I'm being thrown under the bus. I said I had a bit and it was I pouring know. the beer. I... It's a pretty oh, good bit. that was a bit? Yeah, oh, okay. pour, that was a pretty good bit. One. Well, I would have poured chocolate milk if I knew we were going to pour stuff out. I mean, I Yo, can I just here. tell you, I think I'm getting back into chocolate milk because it's great, y'all. It's super good, yeah. It's also like like we were talking about this Maggie and I the other day. It's one of those things where it's like it's like sushi and like wontons where it's just like it is not worth making it yourself because it's too much effort and yep. it's not going to be the same. Yep. Chocolate milk. You have to buy it. You can't Perfect. mix it yourself. See this man it's not right. Heart. Yeah. yeah I mean, you got to go now. buy a brown cow. Like, oh, I'm just going to do that. You got to. <laughs> no, not worth it. <laughs> um. Yeah, definitely not worth it. Uh. I. I thought I had a bit, but I don't actually remember what it was. So I'm not, I'm not even going to attempt a bit. Uh, okay. Why would I do that? Um, Jason, it's been a while since you've been on the show. You've been on once before. And honestly, yeah. we thought that was enough. Uh, but you've. I, I did too. Yeah. I begged. Uh, you begged. No, actually, <laughs> I reached out. I should clarify. Um, I just remember. I just remember <laughs> after you were on last time, we was like, he was great, right? I was like, yeah, he's great. We was like, we should have him on more often. And then he was just never on again. And I'm not in control of guests, so that means it's Will's fault. That's true. Yes. That's true. Um, also, <laughs> I real. still feel bad because I think the last time you were on, you messaged me afterwards. You're like, oh, I hope I did good. I read all the articles and stuff. I was like, you read all the articles. I don't even read all the articles. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm more prepared for this show than I ever am for anything for Saturday. Wow, I, so I think you, you've it, you've goes. been the best guest. Um, Love it. Besides, I mean, besides me, but um, folks, there's plenty to talk about. Uh, but first, we got to talk about what we have been playing. And Jason, since you're the extra special guest this week, that means you get to go first and tell right. everyone about this game that I literally have I have no idea what this is. Okay, I'll talk. We'll talk about this. I, usually, it's the normal. I, I play besides this game, which is I'm going to talk about uh, Shadow Tactics Ico's Choice, which is a DLC for game for that came out for Shadow Tactics Blade of the Shogun, uh, which came out I think 2016 or 2017, but they just released a DLC December. But normally, I have like normal Fire Emblem stuff. I'm not playing Wordle. Don't do. Don't be a Wordle person, people. That's all. Don't I'm be saying. a Wordle don't person. Don't post on Twitter. Don't post on. You Twitter, sound like please. you're illiterate. <laughs> yeah, I, I am. I used to play Lingo. Yes. I was on TV. But uh, anyway, yeah. I play a lot of Fire Emblem, so that's already a given. But this Ico's Choice game came out. They made DLC from Save, uh, like I said, uh, Shadow Tactics, Blades of the Shogun. They had a new DLC four years later after they released Desperados 3, which is both these games are great. They're real-time tactics games. You're top-down, controlling like ninjas, trying to nice. sneak past people. And they have like sight lines. I think the best part about these games are the clarity of the like if they can see you. They have like noise sound effects if you're getting heard. Each That's character cool. out of the five characters has like abilities that can like sneak by. You can throw like a rock to make sound. Uh, you can throw like perfume to like ro like ruin their ranges, their sight ranges. You can have like a bear trap when they walk around a corner. They get mm. like hit by it. So stuff like that. You can do all kinds of stuff to like aid in your stealthing. Definitely feels like a classic Metal Gear, like one or two. I'm talking before it went like more gung ho and gunny, uh, where you're yeah. kind of like sneaking around. Um, but yeah, they're they're great top down st strategy games. Uh, strategy games are games that don't get hit very fairly for nowadays. For they're the new indie games. I'm sure we'll mention that throughout the entire podcast. That I don't think you hear about them much, but yeah, yeah, that's I'd a good point. It. They 
they used to be huge yeah. in like the late night. I mean, all throughout the 90s. And then they just dwindled into this just like and, niche yep. genre in a way. And then Microsoft fights them one best strategy game category. Uh, and that's where yeah. I do. I was like, strategy games aren't really the big thing anymore. It's indie nope. games. <laughs> and indie games actually won more awards and get recognized more nowadays. Uh, yeah. Put on a pedestal. So I, will say, I mean, it was I'm really hard. Smaller things do, but yeah. it was really yeah. hard in Microsoft, Microsoft Flight Simulator to, you know, conquer all of those airports. <laughs> uh, you really had to strategize and, yeah. and make it over those mountains. That real hammer, uh, Hannibal say, push. It. It's the biggest 4X game ever made. Just literally oh. the size of the <laughs> earth. <laughs> the bugs, there was like a black hole in one in it too. It was like yeah. the bugs too. It was great. Great oh, strategy boy. right there. I just realized that game is literally the size of earth. Yeah. That's pretty big. That's a, that's a big one. That's a big one. Bigger than, uh, smaller, or it's bigger than the moon, but smaller than the sun, some would say. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's a really right apt way to put it. it really Are you an astro it. astrologer? Um, uh, yes. This game they actually a lot of looks focus really testing. cool. Yeah. Uh, I, I Googled Browders it. 3 is another one, too. I checked Ooh, it It's yeah. the same thing. Uh, I, 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 I used, is it still on Game Pass? I feel like you, I had it installed briefly. If it was on Game then... Pass, I'd recommend everybody try it out because it's like Stealth yeah. Cowboys. And it sounds weird, yeah. but it works. I trust it's... me. This kind of reminds me of um. You guys ever heard of like the Men of War Faces of War series? It's like a World War II strategy series out of uh, I think I see that Russia, or Eastern Europe. I want to say 2010s and onward. Okay. Um, but what it's what it does really cool is it's it's a World War II, um, it's a World War II strategy game, and it's like real time strategy. But what's awesome is that you can take direct control of any of your units. Oh, okay. And but it's direct control, not like you jump into first person or anything. But like, let's say you have like a squad of 10 guys and they're pinned down in a bunker or something. You click one of the guys and you hold down. I think it's the alt button. And now your mouse button becomes where he's aiming. And if you click, it shoots. So you can like pretty quickly like come in and like grab a tank and micromanage and be like, shoot here, shoot here. And then like switch <laughs> over. And that that just reminds me of like the strategy genre. I feel like part of the reason why the strategy genre kind of went dormant is it felt like there was almost like with mmos there was way too many of them and they were way too similar yep and even though there are ones that are doing innovative things it was kind of too late for the genre and it was too flooded so I, I, it's nice I, to see some games come back it's also a hard genre to watch and promote like like yeah. having like a stream of like which is a big thing now having people like showcase off games it's really hard yeah. it's hard to sit through them that's a good point totally um awesome that uh, honestly I, i'm gonna throw that on my games i should probably play list um because that looks super fun uh moving on uh ian i'm gonna go quick because you have more games than me um i, I beat uh shadow of more shadow of mordor middle earth shadow of mordor i beat <laughs> What are you going to say? I'm confused. Like, I'm just going to go behind the scenes a little bit. You have Middle Earth Shadow of War listed here, which is the second game. But when we previously talked, you were only playing the first game. So I need I need an actual clarification here. What what game are you talking about? I, William Crosby, the host of Local Chat, last yes. week talked about Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, the first game. Which is the first one. Okay, okay. Yes. I'm following, I think. Yeah. Saturday night afternoon uh -huh. i beat shadow of mordor the first game the first okay. game and i started shadow of war the second game. the se the second game okay uh, to be clear this is not your fault no 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 this is their fault this is their this fault. is their fault and a little bit of it is token's fault because he lowercase the e in <laughs> middle hyphen earth which is dear how Lord. dare he um so anyways i i i i did the quick switch because i figured I said to myself, either I'm going to spend another five hours in Shadow Middle-Earth War of Gondor and find everything, or, That's a better name. <laughs> or That's not pretty good. I can just start the second one and probably make five hours into it and never touch it again. So I have done exactly that. I started the second game, made about five or six hours in, hated how, what they have done to my beautiful boy, Shelob. And made her a sexy, sexy woman. Um, 
but also the game's just not as good. It lost something. I don't know what it is. I, I like, like I had the same experience, and I, I don't know that I would agree with you saying it's not as good. I feel like. I don't know. It's different because you're going from one directly into the other. Whereas me, this was a sequel. I played the, the other one when it first came out. And so playing it, I was like, I'm a, this is a sequel. It should be more of the same, but a lot more and better. And it yeah. wasn't. It just felt like more of the same. So it's really curious to hear you go from one to the next and say it lost something. Whereas my complaint was it was too much of the same. And, and thinking of it now, actually, just when you when you started talking, uh, you made my brain work because I was ignoring you. Um, you made me realize that I think it was because I was so powerful and in a rhythm at the end of the first one that I wanted to mm. pick up where that left off. And, you know, about six hours in and I'm, I'm getting back to that point. Like I'm, I think I'm about to start recruiting people again. Um, but I just found that mechanic at the end of the first one. So cool of like, Oh, I'm recruiting this war chief. And then, or I'm recruiting this this captain, and then he's a bodyguard to a war chief. So I tell that captain to duel the war chief. Then I go help the mm -hmm. captain beat the war chief. He becomes the war chief, and now I control this entire army of orcs yeah. underneath that war chief. And like that aspect of it was really neat. And going into the second one, like I understand they wanted to continue that story and do all that sort of stuff, but I was like, I was like, I want the sequel to this first game to be a continuation of game mechanics where it's like now this next game, I start with all those powers and they've added more that I can go towards, you know? Um, but that doesn't make sense yeah. in game design. Like you wouldn't do that. That would be a DLC uh, and all that sort of stuff. So I think that's the main reason I fell off of it. Um, and it's just like, it's burnout with anything when you're like, Oh, I like the series. Let's play everything in it. Um, yeah. You kind of fall backwards on that. And uh, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed that first game, and I think in maybe a year or two I might be like, oh, I'll play the second game now. But I think for now I'm kind of I'm kind of Tolkien'd, fake Tolkien'd out. Fake uh, Tolkien'd. That's God, fair. More I did real Tolkien. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah, I did see a tweet about how you're gonna reread Lord of the Rings. Is that happening? It it, it is. I um, I I started a little bit. I. Because I was going to do Lord of the Rings. I think I might just read, read The Hobbit again. Because that's always a great like intro back into it. Uh, but I actually got caught up reading um, Stefan, Stefan Zweig, I think is how you pronounce his name. The, the um, Defiance Young Adult series? No, I wish. That sounds oh. awesome. Uh, no, he's, <laughs> he's, the, um, he's the author who inspired uh, Grand Budapest Hotel. He like, had a lot of like travel oh. writings in like, the 30s and 40s. He unfortunately uh, died before the war or during the war. Uh, but his uh, one of his his like novellas I finished in like an hour. So I was just like going for it. What? He died before the war. OK, <laughs> I'm sorry. You, but originally you said he unfortunately died yeah, before the war. And it was, yeah. It's just like it's so sad he didn't get to see America's second first like, worst war tied with the one that happened 15 years <laughs> yeah, prior. That, that's true. <laughs> He, he was Aust Austrian, um, yeah, real nice. Uh oh, uh, no, That's he was fair. he was very against everything. Um, I've I've been thinking about because the what what's this name of that stupid show? The Rings of Power, the Amazon. I, I shouldn't uh, say stupid, yeah. but oh, Amazon. It is, it is the Rings of it is the Rings, rings yeah. of Power. Rings of so they're power. coming out with this, and the thing is, like, the rumors were like, I don't want to say rumors. I think they kind of flirted around. It was like it's based on stories from the Cimmerillion. And so I've thought about reading that, but also a uh, friend of the uh, pod, Jimmy Jones, is an insane Lord of the Rings fan. And he actually does not recommend reading Cimmerillion, not because it's bad, but he's just like, you shouldn't do it unless you're like obsessed like I yeah. am, because it is not, it is not. It's like, it, it reads like a Bible, honestly. It's, it's, I haven't yeah. even finished the whole thing and I'm a pretty versed Lord of the Rings fan. Um... Yeah, so I, I wouldn't even recommend it. I, I mean, honestly, I've only read Lord of the Rings one and a half times, uh, and then The Hobbit I've read four or five times. But it's like a lot of that stuff is like go reading through the Wikipedia or stuff because it, it's, it's so much better organized on the internet than any of those books organize it. And the main reason to still buy those books is like 
if there's a nice addition. Wait, excuse want, me. Are you, know? you are you bad mouthing the Lord of the Rings books? Because those books are very good. No, 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 no. Them. I meant like like the Silmarillion and like the ex like. Oh, okay. There's all those books of the tales extended that came ones. out the extended ones. Like, if you want to okay. look up that stuff, like look it up on the internet, not in a book. Yeah. You know. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I, I love Lord of the Rings, and uh, that's good. good. Great stuff. I'm excited for the show. Uh, moving on, Ian Gibson, you, you've got a game that I want you to talk about, and you've got two games that are, don't want to hear. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure which ones you're referring to either way. Uh, the first game I want to talk about, this is something, um, that came out last week, last Tuesday. Uh, we decided to do a stream of it on Thursday. That's right, on Thursday. Mm. Uh, Rainbow Six Extraction, which feels like it's not like a DLC or an expansion. This feels like uh, it, it almost feels like Rainbow Six Siege 2 because of how much they've been working on it and hyping it for years. Like they were like, this is a big, huge thing coming. This is their like, I think it's like pseudo alien parasite horde thing. Yeah. Um, I, uh, we played. Oh, that's right. I got really lucky. I only played 15 minutes of it just prepping for the stream <laughs> because when we went to stream, it wouldn't stop crashing. I couldn't oh. even get back to the main menu. And I'm happy because that game sucks. Like, like, it's just not good. It's look, I, I talked about this a little bit on stream, but basically like Rainbow Six is it's a little bit slower paced. It's tactical. It's like the Counter-Strike format of like you have one you got one life for that round. Once you're dead, it's down to your teammates and then it resets from there. Um. It's also like very like low time to kill, you know, camper heavy. It encourages ca camping certain sight lines in the maps, etc. It's pretty intense, right? Yeah. Rainbow Six Extraction, at least for me, I don't think I don't think I don't think this is all on me. I think part of the advertising was kind of pointing towards this in a way is that it's it's something different. It is a different mode. It's supposed to be more of like a Left 4 Dead type thing where it's you and your friends. It's PVE. You've got this weird enemy coming at you. You got to worry about being swarmed, etc. And it's not that. It's a stealth game. It's like if Left 4 Dead was a stealth game and they only had four zombies on the map. And if you get spotted, then they spin up more zombies and all of a sudden you're horribly punished for it. And it's just like, why would you ever do that when your main game is already heavy on the on the stealth and slow play? You're just going to make another stealth slow play, but this time against stupid zombie AI? It's it's so, it's just so bad. It doesn't play very good. I hate it. So what you would Anyways. say is it extracts the fun from the base game. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, exactly. I, I am glad that we did salvage that stream. Will and I played some uh, Terrorist Hunt, or which I, I think is called Training Grounds now, which is kind of like the... Um, it's it's the pve version of rainbow six siege and we had a lot of fun just the two of us um th that game is good it's just not really for me but it's good um but rainbow six extraction just feels like a huge miss to me it feels like they just completely underestimated what they could do and make fun in a different mode and instead just made some poor poor gaming decisions there um two other games i've been playing uh, one of them is Nobody Saves the World. Uh, I talked about it last week. Been continuing to play it. It's just a fantastic game. Jason, have you have you had any experience with this look game? I'm going to it up right now, if you don't mind. Yeah. Get, keep talking. I'll, I'm going to look it up. Individual. It's great. It's basically like uh, it's a top-down action RPG, but it does a really good job of like, instead of classes, you have forms, but they're forms like snail horse bodybuilder egg and you get like weird powers with them like like i unlocked the bodybuilder of the weekend the bodybuilder's main attack is a slow heavy damage attack where he literally just lifts <laughs> he just pulls out pulls out a barbell and just lifts and so it's like a single direction it hits the enemies uh that you're facing and if you if you keep doing it you hear him go hur, hur, hur. I'm part of it a lot the art is what really it reminds me of yeah uh the surviving game what's it don't called? starve don't starve. Don't starve. That's exactly yeah. what well, I thought when I saw it. Or like Cyanide and Happiness, a little bit uh, of yeah. that art style as well. Um, and so the really cool thing, I talked about it last week, was you have these different classes, but it pretty quickly opens up and it's just like, hey, your character has four ability slots, like four attack slots and three like passive slots. 
you can choose any passive or attack you want from any of the classes. So it's like with that wow. with that barbell guy, I, I had him do the barbell, but then I gave him the gallop from the horse, which is kind of this like sprint dash into the enemy to damage them. And then I also gave him um, like a, a rapid fire uh, arrow attack from the ranger and then i have these passives so every attack i do builds poison damage on the enemy and then every time uh, four percent of the damage i deal gives me health back <laughs> and then anytime i get hit i get a little bit of health back so i'm just this like tank rolling around pumping weights into people's faces and, <laughs> and galloping through them that's and wild it's, it's just it's just so much fun and it's like zelda the map you got so much to do so like i think i sat down and played it for like six hours straight this weekend i went from like level 17 to level 35 like it's just a whole lot of fun it's on game pass pc and xbox you should 100 percent try it honestly yeah. the year just started but it's at the top of my game of the year list so far it's just it master class in game design the design at least for sure I yeah like and it just feels it. good it feels real good too and there's just so much gameplay variety because all the abilities and stuff are different and they mix and match really well. Yeah, I think I think the initial like I saw the art style and I was like a little bit turned off, but I I think I still had downloaded it at that point and I was like, okay, I'll still check this out. And then hearing you rave about it, and then I think I saw I think Dan Reichert was raving about it. I was like, okay, maybe this game is actually something to like check out. It's great, yeah. Um, the other game I've been playing, I, I this was not my choice to play. Not that I'm complaining. But uh, so I had a I had a Minecraft server up and running for my nephews for uh, a couple months, <laughs> and then they got into Roblox. Well, they got back into Roblox. So my my nephew messaged me like two weeks ago, and he's like, "Hey, can you turn your Minecraft server on?" And I'm like, "Okay." So I turned it on, and he's been playing again with his friends. And then um, now my nephew just calls me like once every two days. He just calls me on Facebook Messenger, and he's like, "Hi, Ian. Can, you want to play Minecraft?" And I'm like. <laughs> yeah, sure. So we just sit there on Facebook Messenger, hanging out, playing nice. Minecraft. And um, I, I made the smart decision, which is I set it to a creative server and I have admin powers and they don't. So we just go around building stuff like we built a whole like subdivision of like eight identical tiny homes with like gates and everything. And then uh, the other day we built a garden. Um, if you check out my Twitter, think Gibson, I actually posted some images because um, I kind of blew my nephew's mind. I was we were on the other day and I was like, I wonder what this looks like. And so I doubt while, while we were playing, I downloaded the world and used one of those tools that does like an isometric like like world map style of it. Oh, yeah. And then I threw the and then I threw the images up and I showed him and he was like, whoa. And it's so cool looking that we have this town that we built like me and like, you know, four or five like tweens and under we're just having fun <laughs> you know so it's it man minecraft minecraft creative mode multiplayer honestly my personal opinion that's where it's at because you're just having so much fun blast. just being like let's let's build a bank yo let's build a train station we should have a giant church and you're just being like let's do it let's do it it's it's a lot of fun god i love minecraft i feel like that's what happened with me with that uh roblox park game we were playing is like I was just like, oh, I can just like build stuff, and then yeah. like ended up doing that for building that saloon train station for like six hours. Yeah. Plus, Minecraft has added so much stuff since I played last. Um, plus, there's stuff that I never really touched. Like they have a whole bunch of stained glass now, and so in our yeah. castle, I built a banquet hall with a whole bunch of stained glass like ceiling and wall fixtures to, and then I turned on ray tracing. So I'm playing it with ray tracing and it like lets in these really nice light. Oh, it's so good. Minecraft, incredible game. Honestly, maybe my top one game of all time. It's incredible. It's, it's, so it's, it should it's be in almost really like a top good. 10, realistically. Yeah, 100%. For, for the impact it had. So I think it's probably yeah. the game I have the most amount of time ever. Yeah, I probably the same for me. Yeah, that's wild. Um, I, I, awesome. I should not vouch for that too for me, but. I do play it. I have played it. Before, wow. So. Jason's never server, played man. Minecraft. I have played it a little bit. <laughs> Enough. Sure. Um, so that's what we've been playing, folks, which means it's time to move towards the news section, which means it's time to play the news theme, which is something I'm going to do right now. In a second. Here's 
the news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? What's up, news? Indeed, a question once once posed by a great man, unfortunately marred by his inability to be cool. Um, folks, we're gonna talk about the news here. I I realize now oh. in my hubris that I did not order the news in any sort of way uh, to make this easy to talk about. So instead, as uh, asking the, probably the only person who read all the articles, Jason, uh, what would you like to talk about? <laughs> so do I, just to make sure, since it's been a while since, you know, I, I guess I had the bag. I don't know if you guys changed the show around. Uh, <laughs> do, you indivi- do you individually talk about the article or is, is this me picking a lead for all of us to converse? Uh, you're you're picking a me? lead for all of us. Okay. Well, let's go with the probably... The most interesting, obviously, is that Rumbleverse. We're all gonna get in the Rumbleverse <laughs> when we get there. Oh, I can't obviously. wait. We'll start. Rumbleverse was was the Game Awards, so it was announced yeah. in early December. It said yes. we're coming out three months later, and now they're delaying it. Look, I don't want to crap on you, your you little indie, not really indie game, but how, how could you announce three months before launch and then go, wait a minute, maybe we're not actually ready? Like, because you go gold like a month or two before, right? Like. <laughs> What are you doing? Uh, that's, that's crazy. Weird. My head can. They released their, they had the game and they're like, okay, we got people demoing it out. Oh shit, we have more than eight players. Uh turns out <laughs> that it destroys our servers. Yeah. <laughs> we need more of them besides our one that. that we have. So yeah, it, they probably found that they, it would just re- led to too many bugs and crashes. They just need more time. And more your players, they found more evidence, and uh now we're here. So we'll I mean, see yeah. how it turns out for them. Yeah, and it's a double-edged sword because this is why so many companies aren't announcing when games are coming out or even giving years anymore, like smartly, versus people who are uh, and then have to delay. Like, honestly, I'm glad they delayed if they don't think it's going to be come out in the way they want it to come out. Like, good for you. That's what you should do. But um, to even give a date to begin with when you didn't feel like your game could come out in three months... Uh, makes me think maybe Iron Galaxy found something that was a little bigger than uh, something they could easily fix because they're usually pretty good with that sort of stuff. Um, no. Although, actually, no, they're not because they did the Batman Arkham Knight PC port, didn't they? <laughs> yes, <laughs> they which was god awful. Um, they may be better now, but they the, don't have a great track record. The most yeah. scary thing for me, if you're a fan of this game, a fan of the company, or a fan of any of these, which I had i am not but i'm just throwing out some advice or maybe like what i'm scared about they delayed it but they didn't give a delay all date which means it's longer than you would like it to be that's something it was already supposed to have come out so that's really not great if they delayed and like okay we're gonna delay it to like even like summer or fall they didn't even mention a yeah you know a day of like a month or anything a year that wasn't like stalker 2 where they're like hey we're giving ourselves literally the most amount of time to still come out in 2022. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, 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 I agree. I, I think they made some mistakes here. Number one, putting a firm day, month, a year on this um, when they clearly were not quite sure if they could hit that. Um, and then number two, exactly like you said, Jason, like it's hard to rope that back. Once you have an exact day, you've got to give another exact day. You can't pull it back Correct. into obscurity. Correct. Um, it's just kind of weird. Uh, again, I'm not trying to, to crap on these people too much, but like game awards announcement, that's huge in and of itself. Yes. February 12th. You already knew February was crowded. So why would you pick that date? Let alone act like we have to pick that date and hit it in three months. It's, it's not like they're trying to hit. It's not like they're trying to hit an announcement date or they're trying to hit a specific fiscal year as far as I know or anything like that. This just feels like what a weird date to pick and then eventually skip on. Um, It just feels like I don't want to say it's an arbitrary target, but it feels like they picked the wrong target for themselves and then realize they can't hit it. You shouldn't have picked that target in the first place. Yeah, like the exposure, like you're saying, the specificity of it is weird. Like it wasn't even like they said Q1 2022, you know? Like, like, okay, so Rumbleverse announcing Game Awards, that's that's huge. But if, if they said Rumbleverse coming 2022, it'd be like, cool. They said Rumbleverse coming February 12th. It's like, 
Okay, I guess it's coming a little bit sooner than I thought. It's so what? It's yeah. just a little bump. Uh, it's it for me. It's really don't say that close unless it's now, <laughs> unless you're shadow dropping it. You know? Yeah. Or like, or like, honestly, a trend of like going gold and then announcing would even be a better thing because, like, at that point, it's only yeah. bug fixes. You know? Um. So you're but, and honestly, supposedly now that you mention, yeah, and, and sorry to interrupt, but now that you mention it. At the time, I thought, oh, it's done. It's coming out in like two, three months. That must mean it's done and they're ready to go with it. Because that basically is a gold announcement if you announce the game and it's coming out in three months. Like if you remember um, Fallout 4 was announced at E3 and then it came out in like October, November. Barely any time there. They're like, yep, we've got the game. This is what it is. It's basically done. We're ready for it to, for, for, for you guys to play it. And that's what they tried to do here. And they just whiffed it. Uh, and that's... Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm not that upset about it because honestly, I don't think this is going to be that 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 great of a game. Overconfidence Anyways. is a slow and insidious killer, is what I've always heard. Yep. So. <laughs> Man, quote of the week. <laughs> Put that on the <laughs> wiki. Um, Battlefield 2042 double hitter here. Um, I'm gonna go with the cool one first. They put a zombie mode in uh, call in uh, sorry Battlefield 2042. Uh, I remember this because of the news uh, came through, and I was like, oh. Like that news made me go, I I would I'd love a yeah. good zombie mode. I would play a zombie yeah. mode. Um, Same. And then immediately, like, how fast was this? When did they When did they roll out the zombie mode? It's within a week, right? It has to be. Um, it lasted about a day. Oh wow, that's oh. even shorter than I thought it was. Okay, but look, I I I don't mean to take over the story here, but I need to explain something, which is in Battlefield there is the there is the typical like conquest rush type mode, yeah, which is typical for Battlefield. They have their weird little like extraction zone type thing that's not doing very well. But unique to Battlefield 2042 is portal mode, which is where you can literally set up not quite custom servers, but custom matches. You can say, hey, it's World War II with all weapons versus um modern tanks and stuff but you only have pistols you know you're setting up weird modes or it's like rockets only you know you're, you're you're doing all these weird little things in it the thing that battlefield decided to do which i think is the right decision is you can earn xp in that portal mode with custom matches and that xp helps you unlock weapons and attachments that can be used across all modes and they keep they keep shooting themselves in the foot because they allow <laughs> players to customize these matches and they come in here and they create these kind of lopsided matches that make it easier to gain XP to yeah. basically be an XP farm. And then they go, no, 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 no. You're not allowed to earn XP <laughs> too fast. That's not, you're not allowed to have fun. And then they take, and then they like bring that, uh, they either bring the mode down or they, they patch out the stuff that people are using. And then they launch this zombie stuff and they go, no, 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 no. You're earning XP too fast with the zombie mode. Now we have to bring it down. And it's like, it's like literally the only, only goddamn reason they're slowing the XP progression is because they want you to keep playing the game. Not because the game is fun, but because all of a sudden you're on the yeah. XP treadmill and you go, I want this gun. I want this attachment, but I can't get it unless I play this game for 20 freaking hours, even though I don't like it just so I can get enough XP. And so when people actually start to have fun, who cares about the XP? They're having fun in these modes. You're saying, no, 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 you're not allowed to have fun. You're, you're earning XP too fast for us. It's, 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 so, it's so goddamn backwards, especially when, as far as I know, there's, I don't think there's, okay, I don't want to say there's no microtransaction in this game, but this is not a microtransaction heavy game. It's not like GTA Online with shark cards where you can purchase the XP or cash to do it. And they're saying, we're going to make you grind it out or pay us money. You can't even pay for XP in this game. So they're literally just coming through and saying, no, we want the grind to be super, super long. And it's just awful. Like let people have fun with the game, make it a freaking playground sandbox. That's what it should be. That's kind of what you designed it to be. Let them have fun. Yeah. People I, are idiots. I don't get this kind of response. Like, and also if you didn't want people in your custom mode to earn XP, that quickly first of all why are you letting them do that in the first place and second of all yeah if you still want them to earn xp make make a casual xp in a ranked mode like if you don't want people xp grinding and then pulling it into a different type of multiplayer then like separate it yeah but let people still earn their stuff like i hate like or, or make it 
Make it so the XP doesn't matter. Like, like uh, I'll give you an example. Going backwards, uh, Nobody Saves the World has XP, which unlocks, like, extra uh, abilities and stuff and extra characters. But they let you go through that XP and earn it any way you want, that it doesn't feel like a grind at all. Because it's not about, we have to lock this behind 40 hours of progression, because that's the only way to make you play the game for 40 hours. It's about, no, we're going to give you so many different ways to have fun in this game. And that's what it should be with Battlefield. It shouldn't be, we're going to, we want you to play the game for 40 hours so we can hit our metrics and our sales figures, etc. in order to keep player numbers up. It should be, no, we want you to play 40 hours because we're going to give you a bajillion guns and you love to play the game. It, it's a, it's a completely backwards way of looking at how progression should be in this game. Let them have fun. Who cares if they're unlocking all the weapons? Yeah, and, and also, I think on the flip side, it would be cool for them to embrace it and be like, hey, we kind of effed up here. You can earn a ton of XP in the zombie survival thing. It, it, the event's on for another week. Like, go yeah. get it. Yeah. And then that, that offers the mystique where it's like people getting into the game later are like, oh man, I hope one of those big XP drops happens again. Yeah. Like, I, I can't tell you like, I think I would play Destiny 2 again if they were like, hey, here's a week of, like, triple, quadruple XP where you can earn tons of stuff, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Like, obviously, there's going to people, be people who exploit that, but who cares? Everyone has the opportunity to exploit that. Uh, and I think that sort of stuff, like, that would be a cool news story where the devs said, F it, here you go, here's a bunch of XP, have fun with this game that's probably going to be free to play soon if we're to believe any sort of uh uh sort of report yeah. here uh which which is a literal thing we're going to be discussing here folks um tom henderson known re reporter known insider i don't think he's a reporter is he also, i think this, he is this, i mean anybody um, who brings up news i guess technically reports on it true so, i'm uh, a reporter he's your um, co-worker <laughs> no he's not my co-worker oh no sorry Hey, um, can you talk to your coworkers about these auto-playing videos? I will talk to them. Listen, I already brought up the homepage thing today. Your fellow uh, reporters? My fe I'm not a reporter. I'm a video editor. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, a video reporter. Video reporter, yeah. Tom Henderson, uh, known insider, uh, tweeted out earlier this week on the 20th that EA is reportedly very disappointed with how Battlefield 2042 has performed. Uh, I'm going to stop before the and there. I think everyone already knows that because <laughs> it's quite <laughs> obvious. Uh, he says, yeah. and is, quote, looking at all the options, end quote, when it comes to this title. This is including looking at free to play in some capacity. I'll have more on this tomorrow. Did he have more on this tomorrow? I don't actually know. Um, what do you guys think about that? Do you think that's a good idea, bad idea? What? Like, do you think... Do you want this first or... I, I I need to cool off a little bit. I'll bridge this from the previous question a little bit, if you don't mind, too. Um, yeah, please do. Uh, so as Ian mentioned, too, like, there's no reason this is a sign of, like, where multiplayer games online, especially massive multiplayer games, are hidden behind progression, and that's become, like, the theme. Somebody did it first, then everybody else copies. We need to keep our people in the game rather than make the game modes fun themselves. Uh, older games used to just have, like, modes you could just customize and make in there, but now, like, you need this specific mode to be, you know, to get this much XP or whatnot. And they, they roll mm -hmm. it back when they see that it gives too much or something like that. A great idea, like uh, dead game kind of, but For Honor has double XP weekends um, that mm -hmm. they do and you get double the steal when you play during those hours or something like that. And I'm like, progression in that game is for customization of your character and maybe unlocking other characters, but you can technically buy them. So, like, that's a way you can kind of, I know it might not be the best game to use as an example, but it's the shortest one I could think of is you make it like a double XP weekend or like this is the event. Like, this is the game mode that is giving you chunks of XP. Like, oh, wow, that's exciting. I want to get all my friends together and like try out the game or this is the time to bring them yep. in. Um, <laughs> nowadays, you might want to bring them in because it might be free to play <laughs> according to this article. So that yeah. might be another way to get them in. Um, I I don't know what, what's a good idea or not in terms of like how good the player base is. I don't have the exact numbers. Um, honestly, like if you make incentives that makes your game fun, even though it's free to play, people will find ways to pay to play that, like, like pay in the game. If you make yeah. stick good customization, solid customization, or like, I don't want to say games that get you ahead by paying that's pay to win is bad, but like stuff that just in, like entices the players to want to spend money or something like that. 
uh, free to play, like it sounds so like negative, but it, it, it can it can work if you do it the correct way. Apex is a solid example. I think Apex yeah, is yeah. a low barrier at entry, and you don't have to pay a dime, and you can play whatever you want and how far you want to go, and you can get in and out of matches really quickly. It works. So like it, it can work. It, it pre based off the previous article, if you're gonna handle it like that, it's not gonna work. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I, I would like to hear what these gentlemen say, but I think it's fine. You just have to do it the right way. So yeah, I, I think for me, like when I when I saw this article, there were kind of two things that went through my head. Number one was like, yeah, great idea. Make it free to play because the game's in such a bad state that people aren't going to pay 60, 70 bucks for it right now. You know, like just you just need to put it in people's hands and see how many people like it. And that's a good way of keeping the player count up because I don't think there's any official numbers, but it sounds like this is like the worst performing battlefield by far. Like even this, even this shortly after launch, the player numbers are in the dirt. Um, the second thing I thought was this is not going to change anything. This is not going to help them, even if they go free to play. Because like I was excited for Battlefield 2042. I actually was OK with the beta, knowing that it was a beta. But then the game came out and had all the same bugs from the beta. And um, I didn't I didn't pay for the game. I played it as part of like. Game Pass gets you EA Play, which gets you a free 10 hour trial of this game. And I think I played it for 60 minutes. It is it is broken. It is borked. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't run good. All the mechanics are wonky. It's just not good. And so it's like, yeah, sure. Make I'm getting spicy again. Make uh -oh. your game free to play. It's a great opportunity to show even more people how shitty a job you did. <laughs> you know, so it's just like it's just like it's almost like free to play gets more people playing new game. But it just makes you lose potential gamers faster because it doesn't feel good and it doesn't play good. So it's like. I don't know. It just seems like good, good, good idea, bad, bad effort. I don't know. One of those. I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, heat I heat it up, I, cool down, then heat it up again. Oh man, <laughs> it's all over the place. <laughs> uh, what, Did you? Could you believe it's in. it's thirty degrees in Florida? It's crazy down here. Is it snowing? No, I think there were flurries in Tallahassee last wow. week. Wow, but it is actually big... very. Maggie's freaking out because she's got all her plants and we got to bring them into the garage. Otherwise, they're going to die because of the freeze overnight. It's crazy. Um, I mean, we what, got a big, uh, big storm coming this, this weekend. Got to bundle in, pack up. So yeah. has a higher chance of dying. The uh, Battlefield's 242 play, uh, <laughs> player base or your plants. We'll find out <laughs> next time on something. <laughs> One of them's already dead. So, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, the plants. Uh, <laughs> going forward, folks, uh, we are going to talk about next. I don't know why I'm introducing this so perfectly. Uh, I am perfect. Uh, Activision Blizzard uh, has announced that they won't recognize Raven Software's uh, QA Workers Union. Um, this has been ongoing this week, so it started uh, on the... Why would you not put the publish? started on the 20th. Uh, and so basically well, no, the... It's it's older than that. I believe these are the QA yes. workers that were on strike for like seven weeks. Yeah. So the the I should say the the most recent news started earlier this week. Uh, they've been on strike. The QA workers from Raven Software, a subsidiary of Activision Blizzard. Uh, they have been on strike for a couple of weeks. Uh, this week they went to unionize. Uh, unionization push with the Communication Workers of America. Um, and then I believe they said they would get back to them. And then on the 21st, Activision Blizzard issued a statement regarding them uh, request for voluntary recognition. Activision Blizzard is carefully reviewing the request for voluntary recognition from the CWA, which seeks to organize around three dozen of the company's nearly 10,000 employees. Uh, while we believe that to the direct relationship between the company and the team member delivers the strongest workforce opportunities, we deeply respect the rights of all employees under the law to make their own decision about whether or not to join the union. Uh, and then they said they were going to uh, look to talks. And then on the 25th, what was that, Wednesday? Tuesday, um, there's another update where Activision Blizzard announced uh, that they could not come to an agreement. We carefully reviewed and considered the CWA initial request last week and tried to find a mutually acceptable solution with the CWA. That would have led to an expedited election process. Unfortunately, the parties could not agree. Uh, we expect the union will be moving forward with the filing to petition to NL. All sorts of other stuff. 
Um, Ian, you know labor. Let me. Know, what's happening? I do. I I know QA. <laughs> I've been in QA for geez, well, you do like seven or eight years now. Um, I don't know. I mean, I I totally I totally respect these workers. Um, I I I think games software QA is a tough job because you you don't really get a lot of respect. Um, uh, game software QA is even worse. You're literally. It, it, I, I 100 support unionization efforts of um, games QA workers because you are just horribly paid, horribly treated, um, and so I totally support what they're doing here. Um, I, 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 it sounds like I'm hedging it a bit just because I think there was one good piece of news out of this, which is a little weird. Um, which is that okay? This is this is a little weird, and it's being framed by people in different ways. But in the middle of this, Activision came out and said, "Like, hey, one thing we're gonna do to make these QA testers happy is we're going to embed them in the development teams." Yeah, and that's actually good. That is a good thing. I, I tell you this: uh, there's basically I don't want to say two ways of running QA, but one of the ways you run QA that is very popular in the games industry is that you have the people who build the game, the artists, the devs, the uh, animators, etc. They build it, and then they literally just the phrase is throwing it over the fence. They just ship off the product to the QA department, which is either internal or an external third party, and they say test this and send the bugs back. And that's it. And that's not a good way of doing things. Um, the better way to do it is to embed QA in the development. It's what my job does. Um, it's fantastic. It basically means from literally the moment that the product person is like, we need the dev team to build this, the QA person is right there. And they're saying, okay, tell me exactly how it needs to work. We need to plan in time to test it. Let's plan it like this so we can test along the way. And they're part of the design process, the test process. You're iterating the entire way. And it's fantastic. And honestly, it also does a really good morale job of making sure that QA is respected because they're not somebody you ship something to and all they do is send back complaints. They're somebody that's sitting right next to you during the entire design, implementation, and shipping process. Um, so I will say that is at least one good thing. Um, the wrinkle in this is basically Activision's tactic is um, for this studio, for Raven, Raven QA is asking for recognition as a union. Activision has declined it, therefore it's going to go to an election. And Activision is saying, everybody at the studio should get to vote on this, not just QA. So it's, it's actually going to be kind of interesting. They're basically saying, yeah, we'll let you guys vote, but we're petitioning the National Labor Board to make everybody at the studio, even non-QA, vote on joining a union or not, which is an interesting tactic to basically kill the union. Cause I guarantee you there's probably people at that studio that don't give a shit about QA and are probably happy in their current position. They say they're just complaining. I don't want to be part of a union. I'm happy. Um, so I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think about this? It's kind of an interesting, uh, topic and good for QA, but it, it definitely complicates things. Will, do you want this or you, I, you, I can you go, go for after. it. Up to you. Um, so I, <laughs> my expertise, I'm a business major. No, I, I'm a criminal justice major with a minor <laughs> in psychology, which doesn't help me here. But I will say <laughs> that if the if unions are like good or bad, that's depends on the union, depends on the company. There's a lot of intangibles yeah. that go into them um, and how good for the company, because then it puts other people out of work if the union gets too powerful, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I don't think that's a thing with this. I'm glad game companies are starting to catch up with normal businesses of the ability to join a union and form a union and recognize unions, even if this one failed, it just shows that attempts can be made to make them. I think it's very important that if whether or not a union is great for the company or, like I said, the, the employees that work there, I'm not called for to say if it is the best. But I will say the ability to form and recognize that that union exists is very important for workers rights in yeah. whatever area you're in. So it's just important that it gets recognized in the first place. Again, I don't know much about this specific instance. Could be bad, but the recognition or recognition, that's not a word, but I'm going to make it up, Close is enough. important for this this concept. It is it's good. That's another probably good news about it is that it's starting to form uh if you were to have any nice thing about this article, that's it. But the update is kind of sad to see that it immediately gets denied. But like I said, it gets voted on by like Ian mentioned. So could work, could not. But I just think it's important to recognize it at least. Yeah. It's also, you know, unions are very, very rare slash non-existent in the games industry. Yeah. Um, 
which is a shame because honestly, if if you are if you're a software QA tester, if you're a software developer, if you do basically anything in the games industry, if you take your exact same job and you just step to the side and all of a sudden now you're working for a non games industry software company, your pay is basically like 40 to 100 percent more and your benefits are more and you'll be hired full time. And it's especially worse for QA, which is basically short term contractors. There are hundreds of companies that will hire you for six to nine months and they'll go, thanks for working for us. Goodbye. And the reason why they do that is totally. they don't have to pay you benefits. They can pay you crap and they can just cycle through a whole bunch of QA testers. And it's it's God awful because I literally went from contractor temp hire. Uh, my bosses wanted to hire me full time. Corporate would not allow them to do that. And I was making 15 bucks an hour, working 60 hours a week. And I said, OK, goodbye. And I stepped aside and I doubled my pay immediately. And I'm not working overtime. And I was full time within six months. And I've been with that company seven, eight years now with benefits the whole time. And it's basically the exact same position. And it's just ridiculous that QA game testers get treated like that. So 100% support union efforts because, you know, like you said, I don't think unions solve everything, but when things are God awful yeah. and the industry and your company is doing nothing to fix it, 100% form a union. That's the only way you're going to get things done. Yeah, totally. And don't go on Fox News. Um, next, uh, we're going to, I'm going to hit this as the final one here. Uh, cause I do want to get to our little game, but I don't know if we will have time. Uh, Electronic Arts and Lucasfilm Games have announced, uh, that there are three new Star Wars titles in the works at Respawn Entertainment. Uh, this comes from a post on the Electronic Arts blog. Uh, one of my favorite blogs. Love their content. Um... Uh, and they talk about how uh, that Respawn is working on three different games with Vince Sampella still overseeing the uh, new phase of EA's relationship with Lucasfilm. Uh, I think this was said on another podcast I listened to, but basically it's like EA walked up to Vince Sampella and was like, hey, can you just do everything for a bit? Yeah. Like, just like. <laughs> you're doing you're, good things, you're like, so. Like, really yeah. good at this, man. It's a great um, move. Honestly, oh, great move. Yeah. Totally. Um,. So they are, I'm trying to get to the part where it says everything. Uh, they're working on a new Star Wars Jedi, uh, which is part of the Jedi Fallen Order series, uh, a game I still need to play. Can we, uh, can, we, um, can we just pause right there? Let's take some temperature at each of these, if we could. How are you guys feeling about a new Star Wars Jedi game? Uh, Jason, did you play Jedi uh, Fallen, Fallen Order? Order? I did not, but I watched Save Data's playthrough of it, which you can see on their channel. Uh, no, um, it, was, <laughs> it was fine. I mean, it looks like a Souls game, but just Star Wars, which is... Yeah, okay, I mean it's it's solid enough. Yeah. I did not play it. So. I played I played a couple hours of it and I was like, eh, this is okay. What about what about you, Will? I feel like you were kind of the same. I, I was kind of the same. My downfall with it was the climbing, like, I I don't know if it was a bug or yeah. something, but like the climbing, my I would jump and my character would warp to the hang on, and it like really are, bugged me. Are you sure it wasn't Sith speed that yeah. got you there very quickly? It was yeah, so <laughs> weird. <laughs> It felt like it felt like the game was too. It, it feels like you ever listen to pop music, and you just go, "No." They spent they spent about thirty days in the studio just tweaking every single little thing and getting every single little sound perfect. So it's like the perfect mediocre lovable song. That's kind of what Jedi Fallen Order felt like. It felt like they were just trying to do everything super polished, over the top, mediocre, perfect, and it just ended up being this weird uncharted Dark Souls yeah. Metroid esque thing. And it was like, nope. Nope, not like I feel that. if I went and went and played it now with like the sixty frames a second and everything on the Series X, I think I would probably burst right through it. because uh, it's yeah. been long enough, but um yeah, so Jedi that game is in development. Uh also leading the development of response all new Star Wars first person shooter game Ooh, is Peter Hirschman, uh who has a so long accomplished we... history of the Star Wars franchise. Sorry, I wanted to finish the sentence. Hmm. I don't I don't care about the sentence. I'm too excited about Star Wars FPS. It's it's not an existing one. It's a new one. What do you guys want? What do you what do you want? What do you want? Star Wars FPS. What do you want? Uh, or I've got, what, I've got what do you not want? Um, yeah, go ahead. I don't want a war Clone Wars or Droid Wars or Rebel or um, 
stormtroopers because we've done that before even with first person yeah. third person with battlefront and ea's battlefront dice uh, i would want a bounty hunter first person game where you're gonna like hunt people down go after them <laughs> they made a Jan- Django fett one back way back when star wars bounty hunter i want that first person going in and hunting bounties down i think that'd be sick yes and and like like a pseudo open world where it's yes. not like yes where it's like hey pick one of these missions and you got to do a little bit to hunt them down. almost like a like i don't want to say full hit man but a little bit of like here's a level you got to yeah. kind of figure out how to take him out you might have an objective but there might be a side guy who's in there like hey you don't have to kill this guy but like if you get him yeah. you get bonus money or something like that because he's wanted yeah. you have like a scanner or something yes shit, so. i Bring like back star that. wars 13 13 <laughs> yeah did you guys see that footage that that got leaked today from yeah uh, 13, was 13? it was it apparently okay. taken from uh uh the animator of that entire sequence just had it on like a vimeo reel of it that's where they grabbed it from. So it wasn't like leaked or anything. They just found it on this guy's page. Yeah. I, I'm not sure what I want from a Star Wars FPS, but um, there's some things I don't want it to be. I agree. No Clone Wars because they should make a Bionic Commando 2. They really should. Ooh. I don't think that's what this should be, but leave that alone. Let that be something else. That was the wrong, um, wrong game, Ian. No, Bionic Commando. <laughs> Is that the wrong one? Isn't Republic Star Wars Commandos? Republic Commando. I thought is what you meant, but I just liked it because that it's is a what I meant. <laughs> I knew you meant it too. <laughs> <laughs> but Star Wars, make a Star Wars Republic Commando too, but don't put this in that time frame. Make this unique. Um, also, I don't. Uh, I don't know if you guys played the Battlefront Two campaign. I think I played the first or yeah. second mission of it, and. It was just a lot of like, hey, let's do a tour of great events in Star Wars history, but as a first person shooter. And it's like, (laughs) no, don't do that. Do something unique. Do something new. Do something that is actually a good shooter and not just a let me play these cinematic events from this viewpoint. Um, I and I really love first person shooters. They're one of my favorite genres. So, yeah, give me something new. Give me something exciting. And they uh, respawn makes some fantastic stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Give it to me. Yeah, I was trying to think what I would want um, outside of direct uh, remasters of the first two Battlefront games, the originals. Uh, yeah. But as far as, man, that I still boot up. Ever since Ian and I did for that May 4th stream, I still boot up Battlefront original Battlefront 1 again because that game is so yeah. good and it runs so well on the series x the cloud city knocking the jedi off with the rocket oh, launchers that's the only way to yes. kill him oh it's so like and like if ian came over i would just boot that up again that game is so good for like, like i would ask you to yeah like, it for like play three a, four hours yeah it was so good it's still good um but I, i'm trying to think of really what i want and i feel like something in the sense of like like a dark forces or jedi academy mm. where you're like you're this guy on a mission, like you're just a guy who runs a ship uh, or something, and you're just on a mission to go do something, and you got to go to different open world locations, uh, like different planets and stuff to like figure stuff out, and uh, it, like less linear and more um, sort of first person, I don't know, Hitman ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes yeah. sense. I, I, so I, I have a pitch. Like, yeah. This is, um, did you guys see Solo? That really I did, yeah. Stupid yeah. Solo movie. <laughs> so there was actually there was actually a really good scene in that movie, which is when he gets conscripted into the military and he ends up just like fighting these like stupid planet wars. And there's the scene. It's when he's in. It's when he's a stormtrooper, and he gets to escape. But he's in like this trench war where it's just a bunch of stormtroopers against locals. This isn't entirely original, but I would love like almost like a World War One, World War Two esque FPS where it's yeah. just like you're just a stormtrooper grunt, you know, like like between between the the prequels and and uh, and the original Star Wars movies when the Empire is just going around slogging people off, and you're a grunt, and you're just <laughs> like war is hell and I'm stuck in it and I'm starting to feel almost like a Vietnam type thing where you're just like, I'm not doing the right thing here, man. And you're just stuck in it. Just imagine that like psychological horror FPS war. Bunch of war alien torn. types too. You could yeah, just like PTSD and you're just like, ah, like you're just like shooting aliens. You're like, yeah. And then you like blast them and you go up and you you look in the hut and there's a bunch of dead <laughs> baby <kids>. aliens. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> <just> like, <laughs> 
And they're like, they're like, TTD, one, two, three. TTD, one, two, three. Get to the front. And you're just like, Gah! It's like you're cutting through, like, the jungles on Felucia, and that, like, spider thing comes out and, like, eats yeah. your best friend. You're like, no. Yes. Accolade. You're like, 22, 22. No. Oh, it'd be yeah. so good. Um, that would be, that would be. And it's also very, you don't have to be crazy with that. That could be a linear FPS, and I would love it. And I think you that know? almost in, like, the Call of Duty sort of, framework yes. or that recent battlefield thing where they're like uh, but make it more cohesive where you're like playing different regions and like assuming yeah. different soldiers and stuff uh would be really neat uh to like bring yeah. that together yeah that'd be good wild. ideas great ideas i'm gonna email vince uh and i'll let him know um that's gonna be it for the news this week um the two other quick hits here is that Blizzard announced they're working on a new survival game and that Valve announced the launch date for the Steam Deck, which is coming out the 25th of February. Uh, so get your hands on that. Um, man, I, I do want to do this section, but I'm going to save it. it. I got time. I got you got time? time? We got, got time? time? I got time. We got Let's time, folks. Let's do it. Folks, Let's do it. we got an email. Isn't <gasps> that what? incredible? Okay. That actually is surprising. Folks, if you want to email us, uh, you can email uh, probably me, Will, at subpixelfilms.com. Uh, we should probably make a, some sort of email. Uh, but uh, anyways, we got an email in. Uh, this is from... Let me see if I can find it here. Sorry. Uh, this is from Gary in Seattle, Washington. He writes in, Dear okay. Will Ian. And it actually says Satan, but we're going to say Jason because you're here. <laughs> uh, hey, just nice. a quick cue. Uh, longtime listener, first-time writer. How do you TP someone to you in Minecraft? How, I honestly don't know. Okay. Because I've been using this in Minecraft and I keep typing like TP person and TPA or TP2P. <laughs> and I think it just keeps taking me to the person. So, okay. Gary, oh. I'm right here with you. I have genuinely need to know the answer to this. I have a guy who plays Minecraft and he's told me this. Uh, the way to TP is you go to the bathroom, get the scroll, paper scroll from Papyrus. And oh. you can uh, you can go to the craft table. Four squares is makes you a toilet paper. And then you just can make it into a fence and <gasps> circle around somebody. It works. Wow. Oh. That's pretty great. Wow. Um, If you guys didn't know this, we actually got a couple emails in so i'm just going to read another oh, one here okay. no this way. is this is actually my, this my my super serious tp answer really held him over i don't right know there. if this is a bit or not but i love it either this way. is um this is love actually that. sharon she's from saskatoon maine uh she writes in here uh dear ian will uh and jason uh just curious uh is one hour of video games enough for a 13 year old with straight a's um so one hour no. per a day? I guess. It must be. I'm assuming, I'm assuming, I'm assuming it it's an week? hour per, per week. I, well, let's go no both. Way. No way. Hour per week, not enough. An not hour enough. per day? Yeah. If they're doing straight A's, reward that kid. He's yeah. doing something right. He's bouncing his time. Yeah, because she, she kind of follows up here. Sorry, I didn't read the body of the text. It kind of just yeah, squip, okay. squipped. I skipped. Um, she says, my son plays video games all day and refuses to study, but he gets outstanding grades. How does he do it? And is it a good thing? Don't question it. He's 13. He's clearly yeah. making the right decisions. He's got independence. Let yeah. him do what he wants to do. Let him play his games because if his grades start dropping, then have a conversation yeah. with him. You know, and honestly, he sounds like he needs a reward. I, I was Pokemon gonna say, game comes out tomorrow. Maybe yeah. you should buy that for him. Uh, I was going to say, I, I was, this sounds exactly like me where I would pull off stuff out of my ass. Uh, if, if it doesn't get to like an unhealthy, like they're not up all hours or something like that, that's pretty bad. Um, but you also like that they treat that as their extracurricular. Nowadays, kids can talk to like their fellow students and like friends. That is a social event for these kids nowadays. Right. Yeah. We didn't have Discord back when I was in high school. I probably would have been doing the exact same thing this guy is doing, playing it all day, yeah. hanging with my pals on this as opposed to going to, like out and, and it's different. It's just different nowadays. I understand the how weird it is, but you know, if he's getting straight A's. If they start dipping, like Ian said, have a conversation with them. But, you know, like, I, I think people treat it as their social habit right now. Yeah, there's no reason for concern if, if he's getting straight A's. Yeah. He's doing good. Yeah. Uh, Sharon, take that to heart. 
Uh, next up, we've got Keith uh, from Tallahassee, Florida. <laughs> Why are you laughing? What is this bit? I he know says, we have zero I, listeners, so I says, don't know what this bit is. He says, my son is 37 and still refuses to work or go to university. Uh, he just plays video <laughs> games all the time. Oh, okay. Why do people enjoy playing video games? How is it fun and enjoyable? It seems like a waste of time. Okay, first of all, your son is wasting some time and it has nothing to do with video games. You probably need to have a serious conversation with him about uh, uh, life expectations wonky. and independence. <laughs> but second of all, <laughs> look, video games are just like TV. They're just like books. It's just a form of engaging with a story and uh, enjoying a story. And honestly, it's like any other craftsmanship. You're, you're enjoying a challenge and trying to hone your skills. It's just another form of entertainment, man. Chill out. If you don't like it, you don't like it. You know? Who cares? Any advice for Keith here, Jason? Does the does does Keith work? Does Keith have a job? Does Keith have is he like, you know, doing his best and all it like other if he's doing other stuff in his other circumstances and all facets of his life are on pace. Um, like it is a ho- it is like a hobby. It's like watching a TV show, like Ian said. It's a, it's right. a TV show. It's a, a form of entertainment. It's like maybe they're going to like their softball intramural league. Well, they have a you know gaming league with their friends or something like that. And plus, it allows you to uh, put yourself in the story actively as opposed to yeah. passively, like other forms of media. And that's very intriguing to a lot of people. That's why people like D and D. You actively can put yourself into a, a circumstance you don't get normally to do. As opposed to just watching it, you're changing the course of fate. It's yeah, very enticing. That was a very smart answer. Uh, and finally, we've got from Frank in Minnesota. Uh, he Ooh, says, Frank. "Do we have any specific news on Persona Six? I'm getting really bored on Persona Five. Um, yeah, I believe Persona Six actually takes place in San Francisco. Um, wow, it's not." high schoolers this time they're actually going with preteens so it's like fifth sixth grade which is <laughs> it's actually very risque because the game is still the game is still rated like m for mature so i honestly i'm not sure how well it's going to do there may be a little bit more than a hot coffee scandal going into it because the japanese are weird but uh i have heard that they are bringing back the procedurally generated dungeons but the formula is better this time also, it's no longer turn-based. It's action. It's live action. Wow. Real live time. action. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Folks, there you go. Uh, that was the email section for this week. If you want to write <laughs> into us, please, please send an email to will at subpixelfilms.com or perhaps, uh, yeah, or perhaps tweet at me. Or you can write it in our Discord. Um, Apps just exist. Perhaps yeah, the tweet. Just, you so. know, send it through the brainwaves <laughs> and I might get it, folks. Um, Signal fire. That's oh. going to be the show. I had a really good time tonight. It was very fun. Ian, as always, thank you for being here. Jason, as always, uh, I'm as very always. excited that you came on. I'm excited to have you back. Um, I'm excited to be here. I love this I, place. I'm very excited. Uh, I'm excited all around. I shouldn't stand up. Um, I, uh, actually I make sure after this that I message you cause I'll just rebook you for another time. So I don't forget, uh, folks, uh, this has been a local chat, a podcast where we talk about video games and other such nonsense. Um, if you would like to find any of our content, subpixelfilms.com is the place for you. Um, yeah, that'll bring you to most of our stuff. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Hunt270. You can follow Ian on Twitter at Think Gibson. Jason, where can people follow you? Uh, you see, you see me playing Wordle at Twitter.com, the Green Eight Ball. Um, Boom! I did my first Wordle today. Uh, I got it in three. <laughs> Very excited. That's yes. good. Yep. That's good. My opening word: boner. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Oh man, get hype in the chat. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> oh that's so good oh you need to be on the show more often if that's the way you act i love it um <laughs> folks uh thank you so much for listening uh if you're listening to this uh feel free to dm me on discord the first person to do that with the code word uh butterscotch i will buy you pokemon arceus see you next week <laughs> i hope you get screwed <laughs>
Does that apply to us or no?